This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to look at domain and range. We're going to examine radical and rational functions, and we will be looking at three examples. Okay, let's get started. Here's example one. So we're going to start with a rational expression. And of course, our rational expression is going to contain a radical. So now, for this video, we're going to see the combination of the two. We have other videos, of course, that go over radicals. We have other videos that go over rationals. This is the combination of the two. So let's see what happens. Well, the first thing we do is we look at the uh, radical expression, and we know that that radical expression has to be greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, we get an imaginary situation. So we'll subtract 2. And now we know the domain has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, also, let's take a look at this uh, denominator. Let's say that we have the x minus 3. Let's set that equal to 0, because if we have a 0 in the denominator, we have an undefined fraction. So really, we cannot have this. We cannot, we cannot have a zero value, but this also helps us find asymptotes. So if we add three to both sides, we get three. So I'm going to be expecting a vertical asymptote at x equals three. All right, so this is a lot to process when it comes to domain, which I will do once we take a look at the, uh, the picture. The picture actually helps refine our domain, okay? Uh, but I like to look at the picture as well as the algebra. Now that we have a picture of the graph and in combination with the domain work that we've done over here, we can now piece this together to calculate or at least to find the domain. All right, so there are two branches to this discontinuous curve. Let's take a look at the leftmost branch. Now, if we look at this one point over here, we could see that this point over here is negative 2, 0. It's kind of an important point because it's the leftmost point in this graph. And we could see that x does equal negative 2 according to our domain calculations. So it looks like the leftmost portion of our graph reaches negative 2. Okay, then it goes off to our asymptote and it's getting closer and closer to 3. It's never actually equal to 3. Oh, made one mistake there. Uh, on negative 2, there should be a bracket. Okay, so we're approaching 3. But it's not ever equal to 3. All right, so now let's take a look at the right branch. The right branch is very close to 3, but then it trails off to infinity. And, and on this side, it doesn't stop. It had to be greater than negative 2, but there's no limit to the right. So it's going to go unbounded to the right. And we're going to unite these two sets together. So that is the interval notation that represents the domain. All right, now we're going to fully, heavily rely on this diagram uh, to, or graph, I should say, to calculate the range. So let's look at the lowest portion of this graph, which, of course, it looks like it drifts off to negative infinity. So the lowest it gets is negative infinity. It comes up. And remember, we're doing y values with range. So it's getting very close to 0, and it actually hits 0. OK, now let's talk about the next branch. So here it was going towards 0. If you remember, it's getting closer and closer to the 0. Uh, so I do have that. And it's going up to infinity. And there you go, we're gonna unite the two sets. And there's our domain, and there's our range. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, here's example number two. So again, we're gonna see the combination of a radical and a rational expression. All right, again, what we're going to do is take that numerator specifically the expression that's underneath the radical, we have to say that it's greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 1. We're going to divide by negative 1. 
And again, remember to switch the sense of the inequality when you divide by a negative. All right, so we know the uh, here's a limitation in our domain. Let's take the denominator and also say that where it's equal to zero, there's going to be an undefined situation. This allows us, of course, to find the vertical asymptotes. Take the square root of both sides, and you should know that there are two examples, or <laughs> solutions, that is. There's a negative three and a positive three to our two solutions. All right, so we can calculate what the, uh, what the uh, picture looks like. Um, and, you know, I mean, get a full concept of what the uh, domain looks like. But let's see the graph while we do it at the same time. So you can see that there is an asymptote over here at negative 3. You can see that pretty clearly. And, you know, there's no need to put the asymptote over here at um, positive 3 because the curve is not defined at positive 3. Remember, the curve has to be less than or equal to 1. So it never gets a chance to follow this asymptote over here. Okay, so what's the domain look like? I'm going to squeeze it in right here. So our domain is going to look like, well, let's take our leftmost branch. It goes from negative infinity, and it goes to this asymptote. It's going to get closer and closer to negative 3. Okay, let's take the right branch. It's going from negative 3, and then it dies right here. It ends. Okay, it does not keep going because the domain's got to be less than or equal to 1. Key, of course, they're being equal to. So this point right there is 1, 0. So given that that point is 1, 0, the farthest right it gets is 1. And again, I'm going to unite these two sets. So there's the domain. Okay, let's talk about range. Okay, what's the range? Well, let's take the bottommost branch. And it looks like it trails off from negative infinity, and it actually reaches 0. So it went from negative infinity and it actually reaches zero. Okay, and let's take our next branch. It went from zero, well, it was approaching zero, and it goes up to positive infinity. So this side was not equal to zero, but it went to positive infinity. And again, I'm going to unite those two sides. And there you have it. There's our domain and range. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Here's example three. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a square root, 25 minus x squared. And in the denominator, we're going to have an x minus 1. Last time we had an x squared minus, well, that was at minus 9. But let's just see what happens here. Let's again take the radical expression, the expression under the radical, I should say. And let's say that it's greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra. I shouldn't have to explain the algebra here. Uh, remember to divide by the negative 1, and we'll get 25, switching the sense of our inequality, of course. And this one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, let's take the case that it's equal first. Let's just say it's equal. So we know we're going to get two answers here. We're going to get negative 5 and positive 5. If you take the square root of both sides, remember you got to take plus or minus cases. Um, but I want to figure out, and I'll picture this in a number line. Okay, picture those values in a number line. I've got this critical value here. i got this critical value here. I want to figure out which sections work in the inequality. I just use the equal sign to find the critical values. So let's test 0, see if it works. Is 0 squared less than 25? Sure, yep, it is. So I know that those values inside are going to work. So I know all of these values are going to work. Once the test point works, or test value works, all the other ones around are going to work. If you try 6, 6 squared, eh, that's 36. That's not less than 25. If you try like negative 7, you're going to get negative 7 squared is 49. That's not less than 25 either. So there you go. There's our, our restriction on our domain. we got to be between and including negative 5 and 5. All right, now let's take the denominator. Let's say the x minus 1, where it's equal to 0 is going to tell us where the uh, vertical asymptotes are. Okay, so what does this say? 
it looks like I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. All right, that's interesting. So there's something happening at 1. All right, let's just see what the picture looks like. And that'll help us get the domain and the range. So there are a couple interesting points in this graph. Like, for instance, this point right here is negative 5, 0. And this point right here is a positive 5, 0. That'll help us with domain and range. You could also see the asymptote here. You can see the curve curling towards the asymptote. Okay, so picture the asymptote sitting there. All right, now let's actually write the domain. Uh, let's see, I think I could put the domain over here. Okay, so there's two branches to this discontinuous curve. Uh, it is bounded here on the left at negative 5, but it is equal to negative 5. Then it goes, drifts off here to the right, and it gets no close, or very close, that is, to 1, but not equal to 1. It's getting closer and closer to 1. Okay, again, now let's take a look at the right branch. It came from 1, because it was getting closer and closer to this x value of 1, but not equal. And then it drifts off not to infinity, but it actually stops here at 5, equal to 5. Okay, and of course we unite the two sets together. There's the domain. Let's talk about the range. Now with range, we look at y values. Let's take our bottommost branch. So this branch uh, comes from negative infinity and it goes to zero. Negative infinity goes to zero. Of course it is equal to zero. And let's unite it with the other branch. Now this one goes from zero all the way up. So it goes from 0 all the way up to positive infinity. Okay, you know, we're listing the value 0 twice. It's probably not necessary to, to list it twice with equality, but it's certainly not wrong. One of these can actually be, uh, you know, parentheses, but it's really not necessary. I mean, this really does... Uh, exemplify what's happening between both branches. I would actually leave it there. Someone might have a problem with that, but I don't. Okay, so there you have it. We have some uh, three examples of this kind of complicated situation with domain and range. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other text-based lessons, interactive quizzes, and of course our instructional videos. Take care.